TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see it, little warning screen, just in case. You know, we will probably need it for this, so take take heed to the warning. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream whenever we go live. We're going to be heavy on the live next week. Um, Patreon. Monday through Friday. I mean, Monday through Sunday, five to ten times a week. Premier League highlights, TV shows, sometimes movies, man. We might catch a movie soon. This is the shooting of London gangster Chris Caba, the inside story. We all know who that is. Um, this is OCG TV. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Huddled at the bar in Oval Space, a hangar-style venue in Bethnal Green, East London, two balaclava clad. Wait, what? The f what? Let's 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 start from the top. Let's start from the top. Go back. This the bar. This is outside. There is no wall here. I would never go. In Chicago, I would never go to nothing like this. Never look. There's not. No, I'm too. Like people from outside can look by and see me. That's already a no. Huddled at the bar in Oval Space, a hangar-style venue in Bethnal Green, East London. Two balaclava clad men in order. Second, uh, second. They allowing people in here with, with shysties on and hoodies? I understand hats. Is there no security there? That's that, like, let's get to the bottom of it. There's no security not going. Even though security can't stop a lot of stuff, but if there's no security, that means the venue don't care about their Patreons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going. Then second and foremost, they letting people in with shysties. Not going. The moment I walk into a bar and see somebody on with a full shysty over their face, I'm gone. But I, see, me personally, I would have never stepped in because of how the door is laid out. Not going. The drinks. It was 4 a.m. on August 30th, 2022. At 4 a.m. they got the shysties on? And the Red Cup party, billed as an after-party to Notting Hill Carnival, had entered its final hour. One of those masters... An after-party for Notting Hill... There were so many red flags. For me personally, there's so many red flags. Not going to an after party for Notting Hill Carnival. The carnival itself is enough. You know what I'm saying? There's people in there looking for smoke anyway. You got to know that, that, that it's going to carry over. I, I'm just not. It wasn't for me. Last men was Chris Carber, a member of 6-7, a notorious street gang based in Brixton Hill. Are you ready for the big game but worried about more than... Salute, man. Congratulations on your... um. Ability to play to pay the bills with joint ventures. Hopefully, one day I can get one. EV today. The fifteen hundred. Uh, whoa, there is security. So there is security. They're patting people down. Not doing a good job. I can tell already. Uh, buddy is facing him face forward turn him around and, and frisk him pause You know what I'm saying? What's he doing in the background? Nothing What's she do like they ain't even this ain't even real security. I'm not going Hundred revelers paid little attention to cover and Connell Bamboy a music producer and six seven associate a third friend entered along with them Marcus Pottinger 
he was a valuable ally because he had previously worked at the club. The men consumed nitrous oxide in the queue before some were frisked by door staff. Pottinger embraced former colleagues, then breezed past security with a handgun stashed in a bag. As the masked duo skulked on the dance floor, Cabba clocked a man named Brandon Malucci, a 25-year-old who was believed to belong to 1-7, a rival gang from Wandsworth Road. A fourth member of the 6-7 group, Shamaya Bell, known as Bones because of his dog bone-shaped necklace, passed the bag to Cabba. He slipped his hand into a glove and gripped the gun. CCTV footage caught the moment the positivity turned into pandemonium when Kaba opened fire and a bullet hit the victim's left leg. As fellow clubbers darted for cover, the victim fled the club. Kaba chased him down the street and allegedly fired three more bullets, one of which pierced the man's right leg. He collapsed on the pavement and Kaba is said to have left in a... Bro was fast too. Bro was fast. The man's right leg. He collapsed on the pavement and Kaba is said to have left in a hired Range Rover. The victim was filmed in remarkable CCTV footage staggering over to a parked car while blood drips from his wounds. He ultimately survived the shooting and was taken to hospital. He discharged himself and refused to cooperate with detectives. Cabba's group had arrived in an Audi Q8 driven by Shamaya Bell, who so he survived the initial. What is, okay. Returned to the area the next day to pick it up. He would later drop it off at the home of Chris Cabba. Five days later, late in the evening on September 4th, witnesses heard gunshots near a primary school in Brixton. Later, a woman reported seeing four men wearing balaclavas exiting a vehicle. One had a very large shotgun stuffed down his trousers. Police were dispatched but couldn't find anyone that had been injured. No firearm had been recovered either. The suspects reportedly changed their clothes and escaped in two clean vehicles. However, a witness took down the number plate for one of the cars and alerted the police. Yeah, you can always, you can do whatever you can as a criminal to stay under the radar, but you will never account for a law-abiding citizen being nosy and, and looking out there when, or a law bitch not even being nosy, a law-abiding citizen being a law-abiding citizen and wanting to help. The car? A blue Audi Q8. The following day, now September 5th, Cabba visited his mother in Peckham and the pair had dinner. At 7pm, So Cabba got hit up and immediately they spun back the next day in the car they came to in the club as the getaway car. Firearms officers were briefed at the the pair had dinner. At 7 p.m., firearms officers were briefed at the start of their 12-hour shift. That's not smart. They were told about the Brixton shooting, how the gun was still outstanding, and that their suspects were at large. A police firearms marker had been placed on the Audi Q8. Police intelligence indicated a rideout that the gang were looking for enemies with intent to cause them harm. Later that evening, Carver said he was going to visit a friend. He hugged his mother and set off in the Audi. It would be the last time she would see him alive. The boy was in a hot car. That's the thing about doing hits in your vehicle, man. About sliding in your own vehicle. I know Chicago is cool for a straight, man. They're going to take that steamer and then do it. But, like, allegedly, once in... Allegedly. At 9.51 p.m., a firearms officer sitting in the back of an unmarked Volvo named Alpha spotted the Audi driving towards them in Camberwell. He informed his two colleagues of what he had seen and beckoned them to get in the car. He had recognized the number plate circulating at the briefing. At 9.55 p.m., a firearms incident was declared. The officers were unaware of the driver's identity when they began the silent follow. An armed response vehicle named Foxtrot was stationed in Streatham Hill and ready to join the three-car convoy. The operational firearms commander gave directions of the... This is, this is firearms on a, on a marked vehicle for firearms 
they're definitely coming with the most egregious aggressiveness. <laughs> Tactic, an enforced stop with extraction. Some officers believe the driver did not know he was being pursued, but his convoluted route suggested that he was aware. Yeah, nah, he knew. It's a street dude. He know what's going on. That's his, his head is always on a swivel 24-7. He know what's happening. Especially right now in the, in the time frame that all of this is happening. He got ops. He got. He just did a drill or attempted drill. He, he, he know what's going on. Suspicions proved correct. At 9.57 p.m., Kaba phoned his friend and said, Listen one sec. I think there are police behind me. Dashcam footage showed Kaba turning right off Brixton Hill onto New Park Road. Moments later, he turned left into Kirkstall Gardens, where police marksman Martin Blake and two colleagues were stationed in the marked car. By now, six police vehicles and a helicopter with night vision recording ability had joined the tactical operation. An officer in the car behind Kaba gave the instruction, we're going to do it here. In line, in line, in line. The ARV emerged from behind a white Tesla and drove forward while the unmarked Volvo boxed Carver in from behind. One marksman got out of the unmarked police car and tried to open the Audi's front passenger door but found it was locked. Video showed him striking the front passenger side window with the barrel of his semi-automatic gun to get a reaction from the driver. Kaba's right arm was seen on the steering wheel while his left arm shielded his head. Officers shouted, armed police, show us your hands, as they surrounded the Audi. Kaba tried to escape. I ain't never seen the foot. I've never actually, I don't think I ever knew what really happened to bro like that. Driving forward into a gap between a marked armed police vehicle and a parked white Tesla, but became wedged. He then reversed and hit an unmarked police car. The scene was fraught and frantic. You know what the difference is between American and UK? In America, bro would have been, they would have opened fire a long time ago. As soon as he got to reverse and going forward and back, like, they have all, they have the ability to open fire on you when you do that. When you start hitting police cars because, like, you know, in America, that, they do. As seen in the footage released to the media last week. At 10.07 pm, two marksmen raised their SIG sour semi automatic carbines in the same second, but it was Blake who fired a single shot which pierced the windscreen and struck cover in the forehead. Dang. It was the first time since joining the firearms team in 2016 that he had fired at a suspect. Officer. Wait, go back, go back. PM, two marksmen raised car. The scene was fraught and frantic, as seen in the footage released to the media last week. At 10.07 p.m., two marksmen raised their SIG sour semi-automatic carbines in the same second, but it was Blake who fired a single shot which pierced the windscreen and struck cover in the forehead. It was the first time since joining... I was just telling y'all the, po the American police would have been did it. And they would have probably emptied, emptied the, the mag, the clip. It would have been empty. But, you know, one, one person did it here. The firearms team in 2016 that he had fired at a suspect. Officers performed CPR and Kaba was taken to hospital where he died at 12.12 a.m. The Met referred... Oh, he didn't, he didn't pass? D he wasn't DOA? ...heard itself to the Independent Office for Police Conduct. IOPC, which sent investigators to the scene. The police watchdog would later launch a murder investigation against the marksman who pulled the trigger. The case has divided the public in the UK, with strong opinion on either side of the fence. Many hold sympathy with the police and the huge decisions they have to make. I would say, like, if I'm from the outside looking in and knowing a little bit about the UK law, I've, they... I feel like Brady got a little bit, a little bit quick on the trigger. Because at the end of the day, y'all have bro boxed in. He ain't up nothing. He And y'all don't operate the same as America. In America, 
you, it, it would have been done, but like, and 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 it, it, it probably would have been some marches. They would have walked, but you know, but in the UK, I wouldn't. I honestly, I ain't expect it. I wouldn't expect that. I wouldn't. I would have expected a little more patience. I understand it was a firearm marked vehicle, but he ain't. Uh, Y'all had a clear sight of him, hand on wheel, other hand against the face. He wasn't reaching for nothing. Nobody was in. In, in danger as far as the police, like, getting ran over or getting hit by a car. Like, y'all was out the way. Y'all was just on the sides of the vehicle. And he was just going back and forth. I would have ex expect the UK firearms police to show a little more discretion. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a taser. You know what I'm saying? A, they had a marksman threw something through the front of the glass. I'm talking one hit. He was... He was it, it seemed like he was almost thirsty for it like. in a split second others point to a sinister pattern emerging when it comes to the victim demographic of police shootings since 2005 four men who were unarmed at the point they faced armed police have been shot dead by the met in non-terrorist operations now you do got to look from both sides of the spectrum they got all of this stuff going on this is a vehicle known to them they had a briefing but still though I, I, I don't know. I, like, I get it. He was a gangster, but at the end of the day, he, he, they had clear sight of him. They had clear sight of him. Like, I don't know. Like, in America, in Chicago, it was just a dude who, who had a switch on a Glock, got pulled over, let the shots off, uh, Hit an officer, hit his homie in the front seat. Both of them passed away. Them officers should have let... They, they, hey, I ain't even, <laughs> nobody would have batted an eye if they would have filled him up. If they would have hit him like in that car. And they seen him. You're, hey, stop reaching. Stop. I don't know if y'all seen this. Go look it up. Chicago officer gets hit with a fully automatic Glock. Handgun. Go look it up. In that situation, oh, stop reaching! You, you're gonna die. They, they shouldn't even. They should have said, "Stop reaching one time and then let it go." Cause you see him reaching. It's up. We're done. <clears throat> you can't duck a switch. Not even an officer. They are Kaba, Jermaine Baker in 2015. Armed at the point they faced armed police, have been shot dead by. See, this wasn't that. You know what I'm saying? Bro had hand, visible hands. Yeah, pretty much had the situation under control. I don't know. The Met in non-terrorist operations. They are Kaba, Jermaine Baker in 2015, Mark Duggan in 2011, Mark and Duggan. Azel Rodney Mark in 2005. Duggan. All were black, a fact that is significant for some and coincidental for others. The court case against Martin Blake brought additional details to the public domain about the intelligence police had on Kaba. The year before he was killed, Kaba was released from custody after being sentenced to four years in a young offender's institution for possession of an imitation firearm with intent to cause fear of violence. Kaba fired a sawn-off shotgun outside a party in Canning Town, East London in the early hours of December 30th, 2017. No one was hurt. He was sentenced at Snaresbrook Crown Court in January 2019. This was one of six criminal convictions. His first, age 13, was for possession of a kitchen knife after a large fight. In June 2012, he was handed a youth referral order. Later that year, in October, he was convicted of wounding with intent and sentenced to two years in a young offense. You know, Gaba, he from Brixton, so, I mean, at the end of the day, bro is a product of his environment. His environment caused him to have to move like this. You know what I'm saying? He probably seen stuff that no 13-year-old should see. He probably been involved in stuff that no child should be involved in because of where he grew up. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, all of this is irrelevant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Officers shouldn't come in like, oh, look at his track record as a, as a minor. Vendor's institution. 
a burglary conviction for steaming, a term used to describe mass theft or shoplifting a mobile phone shop in 2013, resulted in a youth rehabilitation order. In August 2015, Kaba and three friends, including Bamboy, were involved in a gang-motivated knife attack. A well-known rival who relentlessly taunted 6-7 in rap videos was targeted in Carphone Warehouse on Streatham High Road. Witnesses described the scene as a bloodbath. The victim suffered multiple stab wounds and a broken arm. On his 19th birthday, Kaba participated in an unlicensed music event in Romford, located in East London. During the event, tensions escalated, resulting in Kaba being stabbed in the abdomen amidst a confrontation. As he attempted to flee the scene, Bamboy and another individual were shot. Medical personnel attended to Kaba's injuries, but he declined to assist with the police inquiry. The factors that led Kaba into a life of crime remain unclear. He was raised by his Congolese parents alongside his younger brothers in various residences throughout South East London. Family South East London was the reason. <laughs> it was clear. South East London. Members characterized him as lively and noted that he frequently took his siblings to football matches. Friends described him as a humorous individual who had the ability to light up a room. At the time of his passing, Cabell was reportedly residing in a halfway house and employed in the construction industry. He was also expecting to become a father. However, in April 2022, the mother of his child secured a domestic violence protection order against him, which was enforced for a duration of 28 days. Their daughter was born in the autumn. Prosecutors described Kaba as a core member of the group 6-7, which claimed to be at the forefront of UK drill music, a rap genre that originated in Chicago. 6 7 and 150. Wait, Card forefront they? of UK they drill they? music, a rap genre that originated in Chicago, United States during the early 2010s. Kaba was known in the music scene by the name Mad Itch or Itch. Drill music is often marked by its provocative and at times violent lyrics set against trap style beats, with artists frequently expressing bravado or recounting their lived experiences and criminal activities. The music videos produced by 6 7 have amassed millions of views on YouTube, and in 2016 they received a nomination for the Best Newcomer Award at the MOBO Awards. However, despite this recognition, the court was later informed that 6-7 operated as an organized crime network that utilized social media to showcase their illegal lifestyles. They were reported to have access to weapons. Mm. They're trying to get 6-7 for the RICO. Manpower and funds from drug activities. The primary currency of 6-7 was described as violence, both group and individual violence involving firearms and knives. Their reputation and status have always relied on the promotion and public display of their violent actions. Drug trafficking constituted a significant portion of 6-7's income, and the gang was involved in county lines operations, with several members having been convicted of drug and firearms-related crimes. Back in Streatham Hill, as news spread of a young black man being shot dead by the police, recriminations grew when the IOPC confirmed that no weapon had been found in his car. Activists mobilized and the hashtag Justice for Chris Carver campaign was born. A week after Carver's death, detectives linked the Audi to the Oval Space nightclub shooting. Six suspects, including Bang Boy, Bell and Pottinger were arrested over a six-week period. It's understood that the Met knew about the blue Audi Q8 in May 2022 when it was involved in a shooting in... Oh, okay. I thought they were... Okay. So they knew when they pulled him over that the Audi was the Audi. I thought they looked back in hindsight and was like, oh, this was that? But they knew. Okay. Bromley, South London. The car was used to collect a shotgun before two men were shot in the legs. The named insured driver, who was not Cabba, 
played an active role in the shooting and was still at large while another male had been arrested. The incident was logged and the tactical firearms officer was said to be aware of the link as they pursued Kaba on that fateful day. Bell and Pottinger remained silent during police interviews. Bamboy accepted that he visited the club but denied any knowledge of a gun or the shooting. When they stood trial at the Old Bailey in November 2023, the jury was told that Kaba had played a leading role in the shooting. He was named as a co-conspirator on the indictment and prosecutors said he would have been tried had he been alive. However, a court order has prevented the media from reporting this until after the trial of Martin Blake. Pottinger and Bell were found guilty of wounding with intent. All three men were convicted of possession of a firearm with intent to cause fear of violence. The trio were all cleared of attempted murder. Three other men were acquitted of the charges against them. Bell was jailed for 10 years. Pottinger received a nine-year term, while Bamboy was sentenced to five and a half years. During the trial of Martin Blake, the jury... Kept it silent, though. Jury heard how Blake was from a middle-class background, a vicarious reader who first worked in finance before joining the Met to escape a desk job. In court, Blake relied in part on a defence that so stressful and rapid were the events that some of his errors were the result of a psychological phenomenon called perceptual distortion. Come on now. Which leads to errors in memory. He was found not guilty after a three-year deliberation and walked out of the Old Bailey as a free man. When drawing conclusions from the story, one must consider... That defense worked? Is Kaba's criminal past relevant? An imperfect victim is still a victim. Why should young black men have to be squeaky clean to escape police brutality? After all, he was shot in the head by an institution that is meant to protect civilians. In the head. Square in the forehead. Not in the chest, not in the, in the forehead. That said, Kaba's criminal history is relevant. It offers the best explanation for why he behaved the way he did. He didn't pull over when he was told to by the police because he was a wanted criminal and did not want to face the consequences of his actions. Nor were police officers following Kaba out of racial animosity. The idea he was driving was used as a getaway car. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't racially provoked at all. You know what I'm saying? The Audi was hit with firearms markers. They followed it. They knew who he was. But I feel like they did an improper box, too. They gave him too much room to m move left, right, back, forth. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, that officer hit bro in the forehead. He aimed and fired at the forehead. Not a... He could have did so, so many things different. I don't know. ...in a shooting in Brixton the previous night. The police, in following him, were doing their job. They were faced with a driver who refused to stop and instead used the car to ram others out of the way. The case may at least lead to some legal reform. Last year, firearms officers went on strike due to concerns that the authorities are too ready to pursue them for using force. Officers, they said, did not feel confident that they would be properly supported. This lack of confidence may ultimately put the public at risk if firearms officers are hesitant to willingly place themselves in scenarios where force may become necessary. Reform is therefore most welcome. I mean, at the end of the day, buddy... That's the job you sign up for. That's the risk you take. But at the same time, you know, there should be some type of like find out how you test you gotta pass. Bro, you mental mental this, mental that in a court case. Like you ain't gotta pass nothing to get in that job. All right, whatever. Let me know what you think in the comments.